Hi guys, Lisa here. Thanks for joining me in the garden. Well, on the porch. I'm trying to stay in the shade because it's like 99 degrees out today and it's actually, I think it did hit 100 here in our area. I went out earlier to check on my tomato plants and it's wartime. Those dreaded hornworms. I saw the little black droppings, and that's the, about the only way you can find them, is once you see your tomato plant leaves, you'll see the little black droppings on them, and you know somewhere up above one has been there and is not far away, or he's still there. So it's time for war. So I grabbed my, my garden catcher, my little container, and I went out to the mint garden. Yep, I have mint growing. Let me show you where it's at. This is mint. It's all peppermint, and on the other side I have some chocolate mint. What I do when the mint starts getting long, most people think of mint as an invasive weed. A weed is anything that you don't want in your garden. However, I planted these here because I wanted them here. Um, why? For her hornworm protection and a lot of other bugs. So this is my weapon of choice for plants that don't have basil or marigolds going around, growing around them. Last year, or year before last, I planted marigolds around my tomato plants, and I wasn't really thrilled with that concept because when you go to get the marigolds and you pull the seeds, or if you don't pull, if you don't deadhead them, and you end up getting seeds all over the ground, then you've got a bunch of stray marigolds growing the next year, and that really wasn't for me. So. I happened to notice, though, that the mint never got bothered. There was never a bug on my mint. They obviously don't like this stuff. So I got to thinking, if I don't have mint growing everywhere, what can I do with it? So I came out earlier and I cut me. I just kind of trimmed it up on the sides. Actually, I'm going to take off this portion right here, too. Let me grab my scissors. I was... I was actually trying to cut it with one hand and film with one hand, and that wasn't working so well. But what I do is I just put my little bucket down there, and I've already cut the majority of it that I wanted to cut off. But I'm going to cut off this stray little piece growing here on the corner, and it's going into my bucket. Okay, so the next thing I want to do with this mint in order to make it seem like I have mint growing everywhere, it's kind of like tricking the bugs. We're going to boil it down, and we're going to extract the mint juice from it. I used this method last year, so I didn't have to put out a lot of marigold plants. I had a few stray that were growing up in areas where the seeds fell, but they weren't all around the tomato bed, so I was getting, I started getting a good bit of hornworms, and I thought, you know what, something's got to work. So I boiled down the mint, and sure enough, I call it my weapon of choice now. Okay, so if you can see right here in the middle, this plant here, it doesn't have basil growing here, and there's another tomato plant there, and there is the basil plant. So that plant there is being protected by that bit of mint. However, this one has none. Next to it is another tomato plant. So right in there, I had nothing. In the back side of the bed, there, I had some, but I have nothing here to protect this plant. Okay, let's find the little booger. I noticed it when there was no leaves on that end this morning when I was out picking, and there's another one. I, and normally what I do is I look for droppings, and then I spotted black droppings right there. So, which told me he's somewhere in the neighborhood. And yes, there he would be, and he's gotten pretty big. So that's my first one this year, and I haven't been looking for him because of the basil plants and this particular leaf it kind of sticks out in the aisle way so it jumped out at me this morning so let me cut him down i can't hold the camera and cut the leaf off at the same time but we're going to do away with him and we're going to spray this plant really well okay and i got the little booger in a jar but i've just put him in there for now and we are going to cut him up yes a massacre on the homestead Okay, this is my fire pit where I just throw um, leaves and stuff because I don't have a compost pile and I really don't want one on the property. So I just use this fire pit if it's something that I don't want to compost down. So what I do is I dump him in 
and there he is and Ooh, I hate doing this. Now I'm gonna go clean my clippers. But what I need to do now, since I don't have base ar around that plant, is just keep a close eye on it and keep it sprayed with the mint juice. Okay, here I've got an eight quart stock pot. And I've just got, it's a good handful of the mint. And all I'm gonna do is chop it up in smaller pieces. So if I can get me a little handful. Doesn't have to be really small. I just don't want the leaves and the stem sticking out of the pot. So we're just going to chop it up finely. And I don't worry about even cutting all this mint down because it grows back very quickly. And this will be a batch big enough to get me through this summer. All right, so that's about a third of the way. Got a quart of just plain tap water. And I don't have to cover the mint. All right, see when I press on it, it does push it and the mint's gonna cook down. So this is good for me, just one quart. Now we're gonna go inside and we're gonna bring this to a boil. Okay, I went ahead and I put half of the other quart of water in here. So it now has a quarter, quart and a half. I put it on a hard boil right now. If I see that the liquid is getting low, I will add some more to it. I'm hoping I don't have to because I don't want to dilute down the medicine that I need or my weapon. So it's starting to extract some of the mint in there. So you can kind of see the color but I want it to extract as much as I can possibly get out of there. So I'm gonna continue to let it go until I see the mint kind of go down and think that it's just not gonna pull any more of the mint juice out of there. I am, my end result, I want it to be a very dark brown. Okay, let's check it again. It has been boiling for 20 minutes. Okay. So I'm kind of keeping up with the water level. The mint is actually reducing. And there's a whole lot of the flavors in the stems of these herbs. So you want to make sure that you do keep these stems in here and that they are steeped good because there's still a lot in there. It, it will get really, really dark. So this is what it looks like. It's been steeping for about an hour. It's pretty dark. It's extracted a lot of liquid. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pour this up. This was my jar from last year, and that's how much I had left. So, and I do want to strain it uh, the best I can, just because I don't want to get the leaves down in there and it clog up my line. So I don't know how to tell you how much leaves I used. It looked like if I would have cut it up a little finer, um, diced it down kind of, I would have probably had mm, five cups of leaves. That's a, oop, sorry. I probably have now, once it's cooked down, about four cups of leaves. And while you're at it, toss some of those mint leaves in some vodka and make you some mint extract. It's great for chocolate chip, mint chocolate chip ice cream. This is the bomb. We're just gonna go ahead and start spraying. Now, if it rains, I, I could just keep this outside around the garden here and carry it around with me, sometimes in the mornings. It's what I did last year, so if it rains, I will want to come out and respray, but it doesn't take a whole lot. Oh, next I can see I need to cut the bottom leaves off the tomatoes. There's always a job that needs to be done in the garden. Okay, guys. Well, I spray and it looks like it's going to rain, but I wanted you to see how to use it. Okay, guys, so I hope this helps. Remember, if this video, if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. You never know what you might learn on my channel. And until next time, go kill some hornworms.